Hi everyone, welcome to Wednesday Up Late. My name is Glenn. My name's Chloe. And thank you for joining us on this final episode of the year, which is also, as you can see, our Christmas themed show. Merry Christmas, Chloe. Jingle all the way, bitches. Uh... <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> I was trying to think of something else witty to say, but you know yeah. me. <laughs> uh, it's not like you have a week or anything to plan for these things. No, no. What would be the fun in that? <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We love having your company, and we are going to spend the next... I guess 40 to 45 minutes just talking about some Christmassy things. It's all going to be Christmas related this week. We're going to like just blow your ears off about Christmas and get you so sick of Christmas that before it hits Christmas, you're going to be like, <laughs> fucking Christmas. Yes, absolutely. And before we uh, we launch into this, just for the benefit of some people may not watch or listen to us all the way to the end. So I would just for the, their sake <laughs> say thank you for sticking with us all year round. It's been fantastic um, presenting these videos to you every single week and uh, we will be doing it again next year. So mark my words, we will be back. But let's crack on. Let's start off with the obligatories. Um, you can listen to this podcast anywhere you get podcasts from. You can watch us, of course, on YouTube and on Facebook and go to our website, goodmoviemonday.com and click the outlet tab. But the preferred place to listen to us is Newsly. So if you're on the train or you're driving to work and you want to have a, a good old listen to us, then uh, newsly.me, you can download that. And it is a super app that has all of the podcasts that you love, but it also has news from all around the world. And it sort of puts it into your phone, reads the articles back to you in a natural human voice. You can select the voice and chop and change it around and all that kind of stuff. They love what we do. Um, we really appreciate their support. And they have a special offer for our listeners. If you uh, subscribe to their platform and then upgrade to uh, premium, you get a whole month worth for free. So oh, why not I love get free onto stuff. Newsly.me. Give it a try. You might love the premium and stick with it, or you might not think it's worth it, and you won't. Um, give it a try. It's, you got nothing to lose. When Absolutely. you do try, they know that we sent you, and that means a lot. So. <laughs> there you go. So Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Um, I just want to start off this episode yeah. by saying um, your fluffy balls look really good. Thank you so much. And as do yours. I was going to say, are you going to compliment my fluffy ball as well? Or no, thank you. Thank I you. Was, uh, I was looking for a, an equivalent that I could like. Do you, do you have any flaps going on there? No. You know, my sometimes flaps. You know, Not you can, in the video. Um... <laughs> you can wear those, you know, those um those wintry hats that they have in like um planes, trains, and automobiles with the flappy parts on the side. Oh yeah, and you can yeah. get a muff. Exactly. So I could say you've got a nice muff. Thank you. <laughs> but I'm glad you. You just know what every girl wants to hear, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The context right. for people listening at home. We're talking about our Santa hats that we're wearing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so by the my way. first question too is, do you like a good snowballing? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Excellent. Um, only if it's yellow. All right. I'll, I'll drink to that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um. So oh, I've got nothing to kick off with other than let's talk about some movie trivia, shall we? Yes, absolutely. So, no, we're not. We're not really playing games this week. We're just going to really have some conversations about movies all the way through. Just riffing. Riffing. You know, like with the cool a little kids bit of prep. <laughs> so I've got some some basic trivia for you. You may know already. I don't know. But um, do you know the movie You've Got Mail? Uh, I haven't watched it in a really long time, but yeah. Tom Hanks and Meg huh. Ryan. Yeah. That movie is based on an, a Christmas movie called A Shop Around the Corner. Now, oh. that's by Jimmy Stewart from back in the day. And I just... I highly recommend it. That's the trivia there, that it's a remake of this fantastic Christmas movie. And the Christmas movie is even better than You've Got Mail. So, Wow. All about two shop owners that um, hate each other. And in their own private lives, they have pen pals that they're falling in love with. <gasps> and it turns out that they're the pen pals. Oh, it's an enemies to lovers. Oh, yeah. I love Which that. You've Got Mail obviously updated it and made it emails. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yep. know, but yeah. Yeah. Got to keep with the times, you know, with the yahoo.com. <laughs> with the old yahoos. <laughs> well, we're going to keep it on Christmas theme, but um, mm -hmm. do you know off the top of your head what the Grinch's dog's name is? Yes. Zero. No. <laughs> Zero? Oh, the, what, Zero is the name of a dog in one of the Christmas things. Not in the Grinch. Okay. Um, I'm looking that up. 
Oh, Zero's in Nightmare Before Christmas. That's the dog. Ah, uh, okay, okay, um, okay. Max. I was going to say, you're looking up the bloody trivia on... Yes, it is Max. Um, so we've, we've clearly um, approached this trivia differently. I think so. I think we have. <laughs> I've just got a whole bunch of trivia questions for you. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't. I just have tr- actual trivia facts for you. But I tell me. No, no, no. I can. I can twist these into questions. You do, you boo. No, no, no. We're going to. It's, do, we're a, it's do. a free I prefer, for. I pref- no, we'll, it's at the end of the year. No one cares. <laughs> you turned it into a game. All right. Let's let's do the next one. Okay. So, the author of the Polar Express also wrote which other children's book slash books. Are they Christmas themed also? No. Um, I have no idea who wrote Hint. the Polar Express. Hint. Well, his name is Chris Van Allsburg, and um, he wrote two movies we discussed, or two stories we discussed on the show last week or the week before. Oh God, <laughs> I can barely remember what my name is half the time. Well, the author of the Polar Express also wrote Jumanji and Zathura. Oh no way! Yeah. So, oh, fun what a, what a, like he's like a, I mean, he has passed away sadly, and he was young when he passed away, and it was only like 10 years ago, I think. But, um, he was like a modern day Roald Dahl, you know, like, yeah, yeah, had he kept going, he would have had some amazing stories to tell, I'm sure. And he's done lots of other books as well, but they're the ones that have been turned into films. Interesting. Mm. Um, you know, speaking of uh, Christmas vacations, uh, you know where I'm going with this. The Griswolds were obviously like trying to get in on the the whole lighting the house situation. Um, something I'm having trouble with my husband. Um, Nat, mine's if you done. hear me, mine's I done. want lights. Nat, mine's done. I want lights, mate. Anyway, um, how many do you reckon the Griswolds had in the end on their house? Well, they, how I many they, lights? I think they say it in the movie. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go a million. Oh, that's a bit of a fast range. <laughs> Is it though? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Twenty twenty-five thousand. Yeah, Ouch. is that it? <laughs> I'm a million to the right answer, which is twenty-five thousand. <laughs> what is with you? <laughs> Why did I go a million? That's what I'm thinking. Because I, I, I mean, I, I've seen the movie a hundred fucking times, but just in my mind. I went for the most excessive number there is. It was pretty excessive, yeah. Good job. Fuck off. <laughs> you won that one. Nat, I won a million lights. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, so how about this one? The town of Kingston Falls is also a town in another very famous movie. Which one? I know this. I was going so, to say Fargo. I'm like, nope. That's- so in Gremlins, you may remember at the start, you got the camera zooming around Kingston Falls and you got the snow falling and the people shopping. Yep. That town is another famous town. Um, well, it's the Warner Bros. studio lot. I know that much. But um, is it? it's another famous town in a, in the movie. Uh, is it in the a, Warner Brothers lot? I thought it was. Or is it Universal? Ah, oh, why did I think it was Warner Bros.? Anyway, moving on. That's not even the point. Um, Kingston Falls is Gremlins 2. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's Hill Valley from Back to the Future. Oh. Yeah. There were lo- that was used for That's lots of towns. why, because of the the clock and the tower and yeah. that's why. That's why. That's why. It seemed mm. all familiar. Mm. Tell me um, what the highest grossing Christmas film of all time is. Oh, Jesus. Highest grossing is different from best. Um, mm-hmm. That's true. Is it the Polar Express? No. Okay. Is it a modern one? Uh, you could call this modern. Yep, 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 yep. So, ooh. Um, highest grossing. Is that, I mean, it can't it's... be something obvious because a lot of the big Christmas movies that we've come to love weren't successful at the time of release. Home Alone. Yeah. <laughs> As you said, it can't be obvious. I was yeah. about to say it's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. It just clicked. And it, and and <laughs> the point I was making was the complete contradiction of what the actual answer was. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's the end of the year. We've got some right. leeway here. Jesus Christ. Okay. Let me just see if I can fashion this one into a question. Okay. 
So, do you know the classic movie A Christmas Story? Don't um, need to yes. know it faithfully, mm-hmm. but you know of it. Yep. What was the first publication the short stories it's based on appeared in? The New York Times. No. Uh, the Washington track. Post. No. Third Times a Charm. The Bible. <laughs> Close. <laughs> it was Playboy. <laughs> So close. Yeah. So close. Oh, gosh. It's Christmas time and I'm talking about play. You're talking about Playboy. Um, um, well, we're talking about balls and flaps, so. That's true. That's true. Balls, flaps, and the Bible. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's your heading for the, for the episode. Um, all right. So in terms of, well, talking about Home Alone, the the um, burglar duo, they had a name. Do you Wet remember bandits. what the, Oh, see, I didn't know that they had a name. Yeah, it was their signature. They left the tap running. Yeah. I remember that part, but I don't remember them being called the Wet Bandits. Oh, Do they call whole, themselves no, that? Yeah, because it's a whole joke in the film because Daniel Stern's character, Marv, yeah. constantly turn, leaves the tap on and Joe Pesci's character hates it, right? Yeah. And yeah. he goes, but we're the Wet Bandits. And Joe Pesci doesn't want to be the Wet Bandits. Like, he thinks <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's 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 sort of an ongoing motive through the through the the film. It's a, it's an awesome gag. So I tried to I well I didn't try to put the film on. I did put the film on for myself and the kids to put all the decorations on the Christmas tree the other day. I thought it'd be really fun mm. to have Home Alone playing, decorate the Christmas tree. What I didn't count on that it was going to be forty one degrees, <laughs> and I only have evaporative <laughs> cooling. Um, so not only were tempers running high, but so was like mental stability within the whole household. So no Home Alone got watched. Um, but the one part that I did take away was, but I leave the tap running. It's my thing. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you guys were like the sticky bandits on that that afternoon. <laughs> yeah, sweaty yeah. bandits. Sweaty bandits. Ugh. Sweaty ball bandits. <laughs> All right. Uh, how many more do you have? A few. Okay, I've got two more. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll switch this around and try and make a question out of it. In the Czech Republic, there's a movie called Santa is a Pervert. <gasps> What's the English title? <laughs> like it is a famous, it is a famous American Christmas film, but in in the Czech Republic, they changed the name to Santa is a Pervert. Oh, bad Santa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love those those countries that change the titles to make them descriptive of the plot. <laughs> like, I very much approve of that. <laughs> very much so. I to the point where I want to petition them to change it here. Yes. What do we want to watch today, Mum? Santa's a pervert. Um, <laughs> so, um, we all know that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. We all know this. Yep, no debate. So John McClane obviously kills a lot of terrorists and all this kind of stuff. Um, he at one point writes a statement on the jumper of one of the terrorists. Do you mm-hmm. remember what it said? I've got a machine gun now. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. What'd you call me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chloe God. is a pervert. <laughs> I love Die Hard. Me too. I've actually watched Die Hard 1 and 2 back to back. In the last two days, therefore, I remembered that very well. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't counting on that, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad you did. In fact, I reckon half an hour before we hit record, uh, I just finished part two. So, oh, and I can tell you, like, fresh part two, uh, it's it's gotten better over the years. Like it to me is as good as part one. Part one's got that real uh, originality kind of thing going for it, but part two, for a poorer part two, it's fucking great. It is a bang on sequel, and it's. It's probably better made. Yeah, they generally are a little bit better made. The yeah. storyline is where it usually loses me in a yeah, sequel. Not in this one. But um, that oh, one's also ball. based at Christmas. <laughs> my ball keeps getting in the fucking way. Oh my god, that's it's a um, video video <laughs> component to the show. I've got a ball hanging in front of my face. Um, <laughs> part two takes place at Christmas as well, doesn't it? Yeah, at an airport. Yeah. It's I think it's the next Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so okay, what's this one? Okay, so Nicole Kidman made her movie debut in 1983 in a Christmas film. What was it? Oh, Nicole Kidman. So it was an, an Australian movie. Yep. Oh, 
I don't know if I know any Australian movies off the top you of my might. head. Okay, that are Christmas so things. It's, if you were to have a Christmas uh, in the sticks, uh-huh. what kind of Christmas would you be having? Bogan Christmas. Not close. Um, a redneck Christmas. Earlier, a, a, I I country. complimented you on something. What was it? My flaps. My muff. Yes. Now, what's another word for that? <laughs> Bush Christmas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, is he trying to get me to say flaps again? What? <laughs> what is happening? There's a movie called Flaps Christmas. <laughs> That makes no sense. <laughs> oh, there you go. Wow, so she, Bush Christmas. She, she was in Bush Christmas, which was a remake of like a 1950s film as well. Oh, okay. One of my favourite Christmas, well, there's two of my favourite Aussie Christmas songs, and obviously one is Dashing Through the Bush in a Rusty Holden You Love that one. And then all, um, what's his name? Kevin Bloody Wilson. Fuck that I other know. one. I don't Where's know. With the if fucking I'm... bike? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Santa Claus, you fucking cunt. cunt. Where's, my, Where's fucking my fucking bike? <laughs> I've opened all this other shit and there's nothing that I like. Yeah. Anyway. That's a God, I love Aussies at Christmas. It's my favorite Absolute thing ever. classic. You know, <laughs> actually, you go on. No, you go. Oh, I was just about to move on. If you've got another one, you can go for it. Go for it. I was going to say, speaking of classic Aussie um, Christmases, I watched a movie Last week, a brand new one called The Johnson Family Christmas. It's an Aussie one. And I highly recommend it. It was great. Like, it's simple, but it's all set in the Victorian country town of Tarralgon, mm-hmm. you know, out near Moe Lakes entrance out that way. Mm-hmm. And it's a bit of a, it's almost like an Aussie version, kind of, of Christmas vacation. So it's a family living in a bush and the um, the families coming from the city or from overseas to visit the parents in the bush they haven't been back home for years but they bring with them like um the new husband who's never been to australia he doesn't know what the bush is all about you got a daughter that doesn't really want to be home blah 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 and so they start having like that little clash around the christmas table and all that kind of stuff but then a bushfire breaks out and so they've got to evacuate and then they've got to lean on each other to get through it and it's just Aww. really nice it's a really nice fun movie um highly recommend it particularly Americans that don't know what Australian Christmas is like. This is a really mm-hmm. good representation of an Aussie Christmas. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's who so was nice. I was, who was I was listening to about Aussie Christmas recently? It was Mel Gibson. I saw an old clip of Mel Gibson back maybe late 90s. He was being interviewed on Letterman or something like that. And they were just saying to him, you know, well, what's it like living in Australia? The typical questions. And what's it like at Christmas time? Because down there it's hot. And he's he's talking about how weird it is that, yes, it's a hot, sticky kind of Christmas where we wear our T-shirts and our thongs and we have barbecues. He goes, but the weirdest thing is that we still clutch onto some of those winter traditions by having roasts and having, like, fake snow on the windows and shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? And it's 40 degrees and we still wear our fluffy Santa hats. Yep. And yeah, we go, we do, we go whole hog. Absolutely. But it's so weird, isn't it? That like we don't have any cultural connection to the wintry Christmas down here. Yeah. It's yeah. just, but we embrace some of it. It's so strange. Like I, I don't remember a Christmas without some kind of component of like hot food, you know, a roast of some mm-hmm. sort. But then. Yep. Down the other end of the table, you got your fucking seafood, your prawns and all that kind of shit. It's like, Meh. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but I think that that kind of t- like tells you what you need to know about Australians is that we don't make sense. Yep. We are an oxymoron. <laughs> um, and that's just what it is for an Australian. That is our so culture. You, that's our culture. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, have, have you watched many Christmas movies this year? I've watched a few, actually. Wow, fantastic. I've watched a few. Um, I've watched a few non-Christmas movies as well to, <laughs> <laughs> to keep the kids happy. Um, but, yeah, I um, I love Christmas movies. How can you yeah. not love Christmas yeah. movies? It's just it makes you happy. I would like to recommend a Christmas movie for you and the boys. Uh-huh. All right? And it's a newer one, so it's not one's going to bore them because it's old because I, I am always inclined to go to the old ones because they're the best. So but, do I, much to my children's a, dismay. There's a new one. It's got Neil Patrick Harris in it. Um, it is a loose remake of A Christmas Story. So uh-huh. if the kids get bored with A Christmas Story, try this one. It's called 8-Bit Christmas. Okay. And it's all about this little boy 
it's set in the 80s, but told from now, like the mm-hmm. dad telling the story of when he was a kid. And all he wanted for Christmas was a Nintendo, like mm-hmm. the original Nintendo Entertainment System. And his parents, too poor, to buy it. And so he schemes with his friends to go on a, like a, a school um, excursion, then sneak off the bus when they go past the department store and, like, you know, flog one. Oh, and it's naughty. cheeky. It's cheeky. It's fun, and it's told with such reverence and nostalgia. And and when it's because also in their neighborhood, one kid on the block has a Nintendo, and so mm-hmm. they all go to his house on the weekends so they can you know watch him play it. He won't let them play it, but they watch him, and they're amazed. And so he just dreams of having his own. It's just yeah. so wonderful. It's called Eight Bit Christmas. Not doing it any justice by any means, but check it out. It's, it's wonderful. It reminds me um, that that brings back a lot of memories for me. And this doesn't have anything to do with Christmas, but I remember in primary school when we would sit down and we would tell our class about what we did on the weekend. This yeah. one kid stood up and he was like, <clears throat> to, uh, this weekend I watched a DVD with my parents. Um, and the teacher was like, oh, okay, cool. Yep, no worries. And I'm sitting there going, what the fuck is a DVD? Yeah, what is this? What? What's Wonderful a DVD? Thing, tell. <laughs> and then one of my friends had a DVD player. I'm like, why are you putting a CD to watch a like to watch a movie? What is? Because I was pure VCR baby. I yeah. was pure like we used to like my uncle used to get them out of like the dumpster if they didn't think the videos were good enough anymore, and they used to throw them out. My mm-hmm. uncle used to steal them out of the dumpster for me. That's yeah. how I got my very first copy of The Little Mermaid, mind you. <laughs> Ah, bin scared mermaid. <laughs> oh yeah, it was not perfect. It had its glitches, but I still loved that every minute. So when DVDs came around, blew my mind. All I wanted was a DVD player. That is all I wanted, and that's where my collection started to grow. Anyway, if, that reminds if, me of that. I think I'd if, really like that movie. If only you knew me back then. I had all of the tools to fix that fucking thing. Mm-hmm. I know. I mm. know. <laughs> Poor little Cleo. Anyway, um, let, well, let's keep talking about favorite Christmas movies. Let's do it. I want to talk about our top five Christmas movies. And this is really hard. Okay. This is really hard because I love Christmas movies so much that I could easily rotate between 50 movies and call them all my favorites. Wow. Um, so I am going to go with some that I watch more than others. Okay. Fair. And I'll kick it off. And I'm going to cheat a bit with the first one. It's a tie. I have to. I have to. Yeah, that's okay. And I'm going to go classic. I'm going to go traditional. I'm going to go It's a Wonderful Life from 1946. Mm-hmm. I just think that is a perfect film. No other movie really embodies the spirit of Christmas more than that one, I think. But then around the same time, in fact, a year later, 1947, Miracle on 34th Street. Mm-hmm. The yep. original black and white. And the original Miracle on 34th Street is the only movie I prefer colorized you know in black and white films they colorize yeah, them yeah and most people hate them i hate them but it's um miracle on 34th street's the only one that is better colorized because it adds magic to it it's yeah like it's, it doesn't look like it was filmed in color but it looks like it was kind of lovingly filled in it's mm-hmm. so hard to explain but it's it's that is a almost like an film. animation type thing or Kind, not kind of. It's just it's very hard to explain how they've done it but um it's it's just it's a artificial kind of look but it just fits the mood of the film. Anyway, um, I think they're two essential Christmas movies and the original Miracle on 34th Street is much better than that remake that John Hughes did in the 90s. So the 90s one is the only one I have seen yes. of Miracle on 34th Street. And my friend Lauren and I used to watch it together and it mm. was just like a a nice film that we like. We used to watch Sound of Music together as well. Like yeah. it was just one of those films that we always just loved to watch. Um, but I've never actually seen It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, wow. It, it is a very Chloe film. And it's heavy. Oh, it's a heavy film because sure. it's about a man that is about to commit suicide. Trying to suicide. commit suicide, yeah. Right no, at the very I... start of the film. And then, and God sends an angel down to rescue him. But the angel finds that it's much harder to rescue this guy than he thought because he's really in the, the grips of, of depression and despair. Yeah, wow. Um, and, and, and then he traces through this guy's life to see you know, what what an effect he's had on the world and how the place, the, the world wouldn't be the same without him. It's just, it's wonderful. Yeah, I have no doubt. And obviously it's a classic film. It's just, <laughs> it's one of those ones that you know about, but I've just never seen, which is sad. Try to really like, sad. try like if you get 
an opportunity without the kids late night, just make that, put that on your list. Try to watch it because um, I'd love to talk to you about it. Okay. <laughs> um, one of mine, I don't have any in like a particular order of what I love, yep. but one of the ones I remember that made me laugh, that made me cringe, that made me want to punch something, that made me go, what the fuck? Um, and I watched it with my dad was Bad Santa, was <laughs> Santa's a pervert. <laughs> and to this day, I still love that movie. The name Thurman Merman is the most <laughs> brilliant name for a character, a child character with curly blonde hair. Just, it kills me. It absolutely kills me. And it doesn't matter if I've seen it recently or it's been so long. Every time it That's, kills me. That character breaks my heart. Yeah. Yeah, and that's t- that's too it like that movie just makes you laugh, it makes you cry, it makes you want to punch Billy Bob Thornton for being yep. so horrible to this kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just oh, I really think it's underrated. I don't know if it's underrated because it is it's it, everyone loves it. Like it's a movie that's a cult classic like so I feel like we should talk about it more. Well, I mean, we do on the podcast on Good Movie Monday. Like it's m- Film circles do talk about Bad Santa a lot. Believe I'm me. not in film circles. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, awesome, awesome choice. Uh, next one I'm going to do is from 1985. It's, a, it's an absolute favourite. Santa Claus the movie. Now, we're mm-hmm. not talking about the Tim Allen Santa Claus. It's mm-hmm. called Santa Claus the movie, and it's yep. um it's got Dudley Moore. It's got John Lithgow. It is just wonderful. It starts off with, like, the origins of Santa mm-hmm. and how he sort of was um, rescued by the elves hundreds of years ago and then the evolution of the years and how he became who he is and then it just takes place the rest of the film in new york city um and dudley moore plays an elf that uh, is feeling uh, he's feeling rejected because his toy inventions are not as popular amongst the elves in the manufacturing sphere that that he thinks they should be so he runs away from the north pole and goes to new york city and teams up with an evil toy maker John oh my gosh! Because inside this, uh, inside this owl's um, lollipops, is a magic potion that makes you fly, right? And so this toy maker applies the magic potion to his toys to make the toys fly, right? And and they beca- it becomes a, a worldwide success. They even um, <laughs> they even create a, a gimmick holiday called Christmas too, so that they can market it twice a year. Oh right? my gosh! But then after all the kids receive their presents they all start to malfunction and there's injuries. And so suddenly uh, there's lawsuits and, and Santa has to come back to rescue this elf. And it's such a bonkers movie, but it's magical as fuck. And it's it just... It sounds all over the place. Yeah. But, um, and um, very interesting. And I think your kids would love it because it's a movie that even though it's the 80s, it's very kiddie, it's very family friendly, and it's colourful as all heck. Like mm. it is... Right, like, and and I love that when Santa's not in Christmas mode, and it's like the rest of the year at the North Pole, he wears a he wears a green suit. <laughs> of course, he does. <laughs> yeah. And I was always jealous of Santa and Mrs. Claus's bed. They have the most comfortable looking bed I've ever seen in my life. Oh, they'd have to. Um, fucking Santa Claus, the movie's so good, so good. You know what else is really good? Mm-hmm. Rise of the Guardians. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so. I don't know if technically this is a Christmas movie. It's a holiday it movie. It's got Santa it's in a ho- it. Yeah, it's a holiday movie. It's got Santa. It's got the Tooth Fairy, Easter Bunny. It's got all of them and Jack Frost as well. Yep. Um, and he's kind of the protagonist of this. And it is an animation. It is a kid's movie. But we watched this movie all year round, multiple times a year. It was such a favorite. And it's just such a sweet, sweet movie. I just, I love it so much. I had a little bit of a, an adult crush on Jack Frost. He was a very good looking cartoon <laughs> character. It's um, like all, all the boys and Jessica Rabbit back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> and it like, it's got Hugh Jackman in it and Alec Baldwin, I think it is. And just, it, I don't know. I think it's just a really, really fun movie. It, it brings a lot of, um, you know, happiness and just, um, it brings everything kind of together to see how the two three works together with the Easter Bunny and all that kind of stuff, and I just think it's a really lovely movie. Ah, oh, it is. It's a really good one. Um, my next one is 
a classic. I, we spoke about it briefly before, a Christmas story. So take mm-hmm. everything I told you about 8-bit Christmas and apply it to the 1950s. Instead of a Nintendo, the kid wants a BB gun for Christmas. Um, it's just full of so many funny bits um kid licking the pole and getting his tongue frozen to the pole that kind of stuff (laughs) there's so many good bits um their christmas is ruined so they have to go and have dinner at the only place that's left open in town which is a chinese restaurant Mm -hmm. um so they have a chinese christmas and it's hilarious and it's like it's it's insensitive culturally but it's hilarious (laughs) and it's, it's deliberately insensitive because it's the 1950s and they don't understand chinese culture so Mm -hmm. the comedy in that just a bit. It's like they sing Deck the Halls with Deck the Halls with Bows of Horry. <laughs> Deck the Halls with Bows of Horry. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so good though. It's such a wholesome movie as well. I really recommend that. And it's a classic. Like it's um it's had a couple of sequels. Um the first sequel had Daniel Stern in it, but last year or the year before, they did an official direct sequel to the original with the little boy Ralphie from the original, now the father. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember you telling that me was about quite, that. That was quite good too. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Yeah. Fun. Um, then I've got kind of, well, I'm just going to name them both off because they're just classics and obviously you know what's coming next and that's Home Alone and National Lampoons. Mm-hmm. You, you can't have a Christmas list without having either of those on it. You just can't. Well, I do today, but just. Because but I I'm, chose other ones. <laughs> I'm a basic, basic white girl. No, no, no. Who they loves are classics? Who loves the classics? So yeah, no. These are just you can't go past them. And National Lampoons makes me laugh all the fucking time. I can't remember what his speech goes, but he's like, "We're gonna have a merry fucking Christmas because <laughs> Santa's an <laughs> asshole" or something like that. Oh, it's just it's the a best. fantastic, fantastic tantrum. What I loved about Christmas Vacation so much, and here's my age again. I went to the movies and saw that bloody movie. But so we had uh, National Lampoon's Vacation followed by European Vacation. Right, two completely different movies, different kinds of comedy, and then number three comes along and ups the ante again. Like mm-hmm. it's arguably as good as the original Vacation. The comedy is completely different, and yet it works. It's yeah. much more John Hughes's shift into that Home Alone direction with the comedy, mm-hmm. sight gags, things like that, um, and and silly gags. Yeah, what a wonderful movie! My favorite, my favorite scene in that or image from that movie is when he's up in the attic with like the, the towel <laughs> turban, and he's <laughs> crying because he's watching the home movies. Such a beautiful yet hilarious scene in, at the same time. I think the reason I love them so much is because of the dysfunction it yeah. just reminds me so much of my own family that it's so relatable and it just it makes me happy that they made a movie about my family also <laughs> and the neighbors julie lua dreyfus remember they're like uh-huh yeah yeah <laughs> why is the carpet wet up i don't know bargo <laughs> So fun fact, my friend who owns a business where she like prints on she has one of those cricket machines and she's so good at des- making designs and stuff that she made tea towels with that on it, why yeah. is the carpet wet? I don't know, Mark. There's tea towels of it. I love it. Awesome, awesome. Um, oh, and when he comes out with the chainsaw, what a moment! What a moment! <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Bend over, and I'll show you. <laughs> oh God, Chevy. Um, so my final one here is I, I picked this specifically for you because I think you mm. would really, really like this one. It's called Trapped in Paradise. And I think I've mentioned this last year or the year before to you. 1994, it's Dana Carvey, John Lovitz, and Nicolas Cage. I think I've seen the cover of this. Yeah, they're in a snow dome on the cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. they play three New York criminal brothers. One of them's fresh out of jail or a couple of them might be fresh out of jail. And the first thing they do is they pick this little town to go and rob because they've got this bank that's full of money. And they get to the town and they start to rob it and then they decide while they're there they're going to rob all the houses too, right? Mm -hmm. But then they get snowed in and stuck in the town. And the town's called Paradise, right? Right, okay. And then suddenly they're overwhelmed by the kindness of the town. Mm -hmm. So the the town then embraces them and takes them in, not realising they're the people stealing everything. Yeah. And so they have this whole conflict of like, you know, do we keep robbing from the wolf? We've got their attention, you know, we can do it right under their noses. Um, and as you know with a movie, like they come around and they're mm-hmm. sort of won over by the town. But it is just hilarious. It never got the that is an underrated movie. It never got the praise that I think it deserved. 
kind of tanked at the time. Dana Carvey's a little bit annoying because he has this weird voice that he puts on. Mm-hmm. But Which he it. does. Which he does, yeah. I have issues with Dana Carvey because I think he's a fucking comical genius, but sometimes <laughs> he doesn't understand how grinding his comedy can be. His character is like, very grinding. Kind of like the uh, sound effects guy from... Uh, Michael Winslow? Yeah. Yep, yep, totally. Yep. Uh, anyway, yep. it, Trapped in Paradise, it's well worth it. And just as a um, notable mention, because it reminded me of it, is um, Eight Crazy Nights, the Adam Sandler animated comedy. Oh, movie. okay. It's um, it's all of the the staples that you know from the Adam Sandler verse, like Rob Schneider and um, mm-hmm. Alan Covert and all that. And it's all animated. And it's about this the only Jewish guy in a Christmas town. Um, <laughs> very funny. And that it's, already it's, sounds it's funny. Not, it's not a kids' comedy. It is an adult comedy. But it's I like cartoon. that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, my last one's just a, another complete classic because I'm never going to not have it on the list. And it's Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, essential. That's it. I can't. Essential. Yeah, mine are all just essentials. Um, it's just perfect. It's yep. just perfect. It's- I don't watch it every single year simply because I've watched it so many times, but this year I decided it was the time and, yeah, mm-hmm. fuck, they are great. They're it great. holds up. It does hold and, up. And so many so many great action movies from the 80s were set at Christmas time. Yeah, I've we begun had, we, to notice last, that. The last podcast we did with Good Movie Monday, we had a whole conversation about that. So um, Lethal Weapon, which was like kind mm-hmm. of like the um, – the other big tent pole action movie that was set at Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, Rambo is set at Christmas. Cobra and you'd is think set at that Christmas. With having like an action movie, which is expensive and difficult to make as they are, you wouldn't add the extra element of like snow and like decorations and all that kind of stuff. But it kind of makes it memorable I think it at the same makes time. Makes a very big difference. I must yeah. say with. With Rambo, it almost felt incidental because the only way you know it's Christmas is because when he goes to the the prison or the the local jail at the cop shop, they've got the Christmas decorations up, mm-hmm. the little Christmas trees on the desk. But other than that, they never reference Christmas. Mm-hmm. You just know it is Christmas. And then obviously it gets cold up in the hills with the snow line. Um, that's the thing about American movies too, is that whenever it's winter, you know it's close to Christmas over there. So true. pretty much that's any true. movie that is wintry is either going to be Thanksgiving or Christmas. Or Christmas. Yep. Yep. Yeah. True that. So there we are. Cool. Interesting. Ah, dearie. You got anything else? Got any news? Um, I did watch a movie with my son. It wasn't yep. Christmas themed at all, but I really needed mm. to break him out of the YouTube cycle that he's mm-hmm. been on. Um, and he was set on watching Paw Patrol and I said, it's not fucking happening. We are not <laughs> watching Paw Patrol. I'm going to educate you. So we ended up watching uh, Little Giants, Rick Moranis and yeah, yeah. Ed, O'Neill Ed O'Neill. And, mm-hmm. and the mum from Goonies. I can't remember her name, but she's in it also. How weird that you say the mum from Goonies, you can't remember her name because the other day I was going down her IMDb page. Oh, because, really? Well, cause she's in everything. She was in Die Hard. Yeah. She's in Lethal Weapon. I um, cannot remember her name. Yeah. She died a few years ago. Um, hang on, let's have a look. Die Hard Lethal Weapon actress. I could just go Goonies and that'd be easier, but it's Mary Allen Trainer. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, so, yeah, anyway, we watched Little Giants. Um, for those not familiar, I'm sure you are, but it's Rick Moranis and Ed O'Neill, other like head coaches for like a peewee football teams one's obviously the underdogs the other ones are also super trained Mm -hmm. brothers have a rivalry all this kind of stuff and i thought that he was going to get fidgety through it because it is like an early 90 maybe more for pre-teen kind of years he's only six Mm -hmm. he sat there throughout the entire thing he asked me once do we have to keep watching this and i said yes (laughs) do we have to keep watching this he loved it Yes, uh, he he didn't make a pape for the rest of the movie. At the end, he's like, "So did they win?" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> they <laughs> celebrated. <course. laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, but also <laughs> at the end, he goes, "Um, oh, he goes, mum, that has one of my favorite characters in it." And I go, "Oh, tell me." And I couldn't figure out who he was talking about, but he was talking about the slightly larger child that farts throughout the whole movie. <laughs> of course. So my kids are still going to be my kids, and farts are funny. So. And so, like most kids' movies in the eighties and nineties, had a fat kid, mm-hmm. you know, and it was the comical fodder, like yep. you know. And it's yeah. funny. It is. Yeah. It's it <laughs> is funny. That's the thing, right? He's eating M and M's and farting on people. It's fucking hilarious. 
<laughs> Remember the fat kid in bench warmers, the beef stew? <laughs> yes. Oh I mean, you got God. you got chunk from Goonies, like, and you've got in Stand by Me, you got the chubby kid, like Jerry O'Connell. Mm-hmm. You have to have the chubby kid. Yeah, yeah, I miss the chubby kids. Stephen King's It had the chubby kid. Yeah, I love it. I love uh, it. Yeah. All right. I want to talk about some Christmas movies that you may never consider watching, and I think you probably should. Okay. Um. So I've got four written down here that I think you should give a shot. If not this year, definitely next year going to start with Anna and the Apocalypse. Have you heard of this one? No. It's a bit of a cult classic now, modern cult classic, 2017. It's been described as Shaun of the Dead meets La La Land. Ew, what? It is fantastic. It's a zombie musical and it is the best. So it all takes place at a school. It's an English film, which is where the Shaun of the Dead kind of thing comes from. Mm -hmm, And they're at school in like drama class at Christmas time, putting on this big Christmas um, musical. And a zombie outbreak happens while they're in there and they get trapped in the school while there's the town of zombies Obviously, trying to get in. Yeah. But they they uh they kick into action and they fend off the zombies as a musical. So there's so much <laughs> song and dance up on the desks, you know, twirling the weapons and you know, doing like you know, you know in musicals they got a walking stick and they go tap, tap. Uh-huh. Like they do that with like axes and shit like that. And right. It's, and, See- and it's got all the Christmas colours and it's yeah, it's awesome. So I'm going to give you some advice. Mm. That sounds like a really good movie. Yeah. And I really want to watch that. Yeah. Don't describe it as La La Land. Don't describe it as <laughs> La La Land. That is I what's won't on watch the, it. That's what's on the poster, right? No. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. So that's how it's been described. Look, I hate La La Land too. I would oh. never use that word, but it was like, it was a good, it's a good line though. Like, all Shaun you had of the to Dead say is zombie La La musical Land. and I'm sold. That's all you had to say. <laughs> but don't you reckon, like, even though we hate La La Land, that's a great selling point, though. You, the, the two movies that should not be connected in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, fair, I guess. <laughs> fair. I mean, you should love La La Land, being the musical lover that you are. No, I did not enjoy that movie. No, me too. I, I hated it. It was way overrated. <laughs> um, all right. So I have one. Mm. And this is one that I watched last year, and I watched it specifically for our podcast last year. Ooh. And it's called A Night, The Night Before Christmas, but the night is like a like a like a medieval this, this night. It's like a Hallmark movie, isn't it? It sure is. It's got <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens in it. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> Look, it's pretty terrible. But mm. what is Christmas without terrible Hallmark movies? She like Vanessa Hudgens has been in so many, so I could just rattle them off. But this one, because I love like medieval and I love the time yeah. period things and stuff and then mixing with Christmas and there's a little girl involved and it's just, it's a little bit sweet. It's a little yeah. bit cringe because it's like, ugh, okay, we get it. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. It was You know cute. what? One of my favourite things about December and all the Christmas stuff is the Hallmark movies, right? Even if I mm-hmm. don't necessarily dive into them every year, I love watching the thumbnails on, on the mm-hmm. streaming services. Um, I'm very tempted to jump into any any given one of them at any given time. Um, I usually don't, but I've got no problem doing so. Like, I love the sappiness of them. They're very wholesome. I like wholesome. I mm. love that they've always got the the woman and the man in Christmas colours. So he's always in the red, she's always in the green or vice versa. And mm-hmm. if you look at all the thumbnails, they're all the same. <laughs> they all look the same. They all have the same storyline. All the actors look exactly the same. Yeah. It's very, very cookie cutter. But they're just... You, like you said, wholesome, but wholesome is a fine line because that can also mean boring, and you don't want it to be boring either. Yeah, you know? yeah. Wholesome in that you know where it's going, you know how it's going to end, and that is a very wholesome tone. It's 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 Christmas cocaine. Like it is addictive once you're into it. <laughs> it's just like it's the, it's the the white powdered snow. True. Of movies. Um. Okay. Well, have you heard of Fat Man? Uh huh. You got to watch this one. Get okay. your hubby, get your hubby onto this one too. 2020, Mel Gibson playing a very cantankerous oh, yeah, Santa. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's like it's, it's almost like Die Hard with Santa. I haven't right? seen it, yes. but that's been on like the top of my list because I do see it. Excellent. So I'm Santa scrolling. has hit hard times, right? He's trying. It's hard to make ends meet. He has to lay off the elves, you know, because you know oh, he hasn't. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but to make matters worse, to compound it all, there's a a very rich kid who sends a hitman to kill Santa because he's been struck off the good list. He's on the naughty oh, list. Oh, no. So now Santa has to deal with this hitman 
that's on the fringes of his property trying to kill him. It's Walter Goggins, by the way, like the Walter Goggins. Um, and he turns out, it's not, not really a spoiler, but he turns out that he had also been struck off the naughty list when he was a kid. So he's got resentment for Santa. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah. Fucking great action movie. Mm. I, you're selling these to me. You really oh, good. are. Good. You are. Um, my next one that I'm going to try and sell to you, hear me out here. It's called Christmas <laughs> with the Campbells. All right. You've probably not heard of this, but I'm going to tell you why you should watch it. All right. Do it. It has Justin Long in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know the one you mean. Go on, keep going. I think it's like Brittany Snow as well, maybe. I, um, think so. I can't quite remember. Um, I haven't fully watched it yet because I kept getting distracted, but I only <laughs> watched it for Justin Long. Um, and you should do. Yeah, I will. That kind of conjures up a hallmarky kind of. Thing. Oh, it's definitely hallmarky. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, worth it. Okay, well, this is not Hallmarky at all. It's 1974. It's called Black Christmas. It's a mm. horror movie, but oh, it is God. the horror movie that set the set the tone for horror movies to come. So without this movie, you wouldn't have Scream, that's for sure. So it stars Margot Kibbe, uh, sorry, Margot Kitty, Margot Kidder from mm-hmm. Superman, you know, Lois Lane. It's mm-hmm. got Olivia Hussey and um, Andrea Martin from My Big Fat Greek Wedding, you know, the auntie. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when she was a teenager, and it's all set in a sorority house on Christmas, right? So okay. the, soror- the sorority house, I love horror set in sorority houses, but it's all set up with Christmas lights, so it's very colourful. Is that because they're uh, all having pillow fights with their tops off? There's none of that, but it kind of has that vibe. Right, okay. Um, yep. But, but th- yeah, I'll go into that in a little bit. But the premise is <laughs> um, there's only a few of them left in the sorority over Christmas because the rest have gone home, mm-hmm. and a serial killer sneaks into the sorority without them knowing mm-hmm. and then makes prank phone calls to them from inside the house. Oh, Same okay. Like, yeah. like, I know what you're doing. I can see who, you know, what, you know. So they're talking, oh, yeah, as if you know what I'm doing right now. And he's like, well, you're sticking your finger up at me, you know, like that yep. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just a really, really fucking great effective horror movie. Melzy from the Horror Film Society will back me up. She loves it. Mm-hmm. Um, Jarrett. You can't have him talk about this movie without him quoting the most infamous line when he goes, I can smell you in your piggy cunt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. oh, my God. And this is from, like, 1974, right? Um, just a wonderful movie. It was remade um, in the mid-2000s, which is a pretty good remake. Melzy loves that one, and she screened it this year. Then it was remade again maybe two years ago. In a with a very very strong feminist kind of um, mm-hmm. angle, and it was absolutely hated and maligned even by feminists. Like it was just such a on the nose kind of thing. It just really right. was fucking terrible. So 1974, Black Christmas, highly recommended. Also, the same director of that family movie, A Christmas Story. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Bob Clark. He um Using he did the word. Peggy Cantonese movies yeah. with Christmas movies. He's also the guy that oh, gave man. us Porkies. He gave us Porkies. He gave us a lot of kids' films. Um, yeah, anyway. Wow. There you go. Interesting. I have nothing else really to add other than basic <laughs> white girl suggestions. <laughs> um, and the only reason I'm going to be suggesting these two is because they are classics that you literally cannot go through Christmas without watching. And they're ones that I don't necessarily love 100%, but... They're always there. They will never leave. They will be there forever, and that's Love Actually an Elf. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't seen those, shame. Shame on you. Uh, very I device- don't um, usually shame, but shame. Love Actually is very divisive. There's people that absolutely hate mm-hmm. it passionately. Yeah. And so over the years, I've loved it, and I've slowly grown to not love it as yeah, much same. as I used to. Same. And same with Elf. Yeah. Um, Elf is classic because you can quote it and it's everywhere. And Will Ferrell did do a really great job as Buddy the Elf, I do believe. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it's a really long, it's really long or it's yep. drawn out. I don't know what it is, but the the more times I watch, I'm not selling this to you. I'm supposed no, to be I mean, selling them to you. No, but no, you know, because I, I know both films and I don't particularly love both films. I think Elf, I enjoyed the one time I saw it for the first time and then every subsequent viewing, I didn't like it at all. I thought it was mm. just... um. It's supposed to be stupid, but it was grinding. Like, it really got on my nerves. And also um, um, Zoe Deschanel with blonde hair. Ooh, freaky. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah. 
And I love like actually, like, I do, look, I do love Love Actually. However, I, I can't easily sit down and watch it anymore. It's probably, I've done it too many times. It's yeah, I think I'm the same. I think I've yeah. over, over exerted yeah. myself on the Love yeah. Actually. But yeah. in terms of hearing me out about them, if you haven't seen them, it, they, are, they are like essentials for Christmas viewing. So For sure. If you've never seen Love Actually, it's a great first time watch. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Bill, Bill Nye absolutely steals that. You know, oh. just, it, nearly everyone has a moment where they steal the show, but yeah. I love him. So my final one for you, this is the movie that um, Home Alone plagiarized. And the director of this film actually tried to sue 20th Century Fox at the time um, because they, they kind of did rip off Ooh. this one. It's got a few titles, but the main one um, was called, it's a French movie. It's called Deadly Game. Okay. Deadly Games, I should say. Um, so it's all about a boy that is obsessed with action movies, right? So he loves mm-hmm. those Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Rambo, the, the Stallone kind of movies. Um, and he has, he finds himself at Christmas time having to defend his home from a serial killer dressed as Santa Claus that's broken in. Um, and he has to defend not only his home, but his invalid grandfather that he lives oh with. Oh, my God. But because he watches all these action movies, he knows how to make traps. So He's Rambo very taught, prepared. Uh-huh. Rambo taught him how to make traps. And that is where, even though it's an action movie with, Little tweaks of horror in there. It's Home Alone. It's the kids setting up traps on the stairs. It's the kids mm-hmm. doing all these booby booby traps and all that. And it's the, the 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 Santa falling for them, and getting injured and stuff. But just in a much more gnarly and violent way. It's very much a violent movie. Violent movie, yes. Yeah. So they kiddied it up for Home Alone, definitely. But- yeah, absolutely. But there's no doubt. Like it, it kind of should have in the credits of Home Alone said inspired by. Deadly games, right. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Okay. Um, you can see where the influence came. I don't think there was much. I don't think the guy won his lawsuit against 20th Century Fox, pretty much because they had the might. They had all the power of yeah. you know, being able to afford the big lawyers. But um, yeah, it's it's one once again Malzi has screened that at the Horror Film Society. It's just a, a bit of a cult classic. It's getting more popular as the years go on and people discover it. Nice. Yeah. So there you nice. go. Nice. Christmas. Interesting. All but wrapped up with a nice little bow. Oh. This is, this is the last episode for the year. I'm so sad. I know. Um, well, people will get a little bit more of you next week because you are going to, or this week, I should say, you're going to be on the final episode of Good Movie Monday. It's an all in with everybody. So that's mm-hmm. going to be fun. But um, we'll be back next year here doing this. It will. And I just want to say, you know, you are a really wonderful host. You are a really wonderful friend. Um, You are a really wonderful co-host of this show and I just want to say that this Christmas I appreciate you and you're one of my best friends and thank you for coming along on this ride with me. I wouldn't do it with anyone else, um, even though I did do it with my mum, but I wouldn't do it with anyone else. (laughs) And just Merry Christmas and thank you for being you. That is a beautiful thing to say and right back at you. Like I absolutely wouldn't do this show at all if it wasn't for you. Like, I wouldn't bother getting a new host. If you decided you wanted to pull the plug, we'd be done. Like, I wouldn't do it. Um, So, absolutely the same. I wish we lived closer so we could hang out more often and do these in person. But you know what? I take what I can get. So, love you heaps. And um, I appreciate everything you do for the show. So, thank you. Merry Christmas. (laughs) Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to all of our listeners. Um, Thank you very much for joining us every single week. We appreciate you more than you really know. Um, thank you again. Um, oh, and also, I'm really sorry to do this, but um, <laughs> my friend got Nick got really offended that we gave a shout out to Colton and not to him. So, Nick, <laughs> Nick, love you, buddy. Uh, g'day, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, mate. <laughs> Merry he Christmas. Gets, he gets the special one. The, he does. The, he does. The, the end of year sign The very off. last one. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, that is us for the year, folks. Once again, thank you very much. We're going to be back on March 6th. So put that in your diary. Keep up with the um, the Good Movie Monday socials as well because it's going to be a, a few things dripped here and there throughout the summertime to, to keep you uh, keep you amused. But um, all right, Chloe, have a great Christmas. All the best to your family. And I'll see you next year. You too. Merry Christmas. <laughs>